I am Doomsvitz, and this is day 34 of Spawn Year. I wish this was Angela year instead of Spawn year. Angela is a lot of fun. She loves her work, hunting hell spawns and other demonic creatures, and her immortal life is one big game. She has all the personality I've been missing from Spawn now that I'm reading a book that focuses on her. I don't mean to say Al shouldn't be a tragic and tortured character, I just feel like there's more legitimate life breathed into Angela in this one issue than Spawn has had in 28, and that isn't just because he's dead. The devil, as they say, is in the details. In this case, the angel is. Neil Gaiman gives us a lot of specifics about who Angela is and what she's all about. And he opens this comic with the perfect hook. Today is my 100,000th birthday. How can you not read on after that opening line? Angela is something of a legend among the angels. She's killed off dozens of spawns and has a reputation for doing everything by the book. Gaiman wants to make it clear that Angela isn't another overt killer admonisher, a loose cannon that an employer aims at whomever he wants dead. She enjoys killing, but she's a hunter, not a murderer. She has a level head and does everything through the proper legal channels. So she's hunting a dragon as a birthday present to herself, and this scene tells us a lot about her. Her idea of a treat is a grueling challenge, and she's instantly made unique by taking such joy in something the reader might find terrifying or barbaric. Like many of McFarlane's issues, there's a lot of text on the page, but it's giving us a lot of relevant information and believably putting us in Angela's head, rather than just explaining how she feels with details like the living ribbons that want to help Angela fight, but she holds them back because she wants this trophy to be won entirely on her own. Her victory is interrupted when a host of angels comes to arrest her for treason. It's left as a mystery what the evidence is against her, but Angela is accused of working for Mount Bulge and her friends expect she's being set up by someone. I love the angelic terminology. An entire host? Just to arrest one little hunter? I'm flattered. She's witty, she's calm under fire, she doesn't complain constantly, and when she does complain, it's understated and a little funny. You know, this is shaping up to be a really rotten birthday. And in considering how likable Angela is and how alive Gaiman is making the world of the angels, I can't help but wonder if he's making fun of Spawn when we see him, or if he's just trying to be consistent with the way Spawn has been characterized up till now. After some breathtaking splash pages and gripping action panels from the insanely talented Greg Capullo of the gorgeous and scantily clad Angela fighting a dragon in a frozen tundra, we see two full pages of Spawn sitting in the rain trying not to think of Wanda and imagining being a guest on the the Oprah Winfrey show. It's funny, and Gaiman does imbue him with more personality than we've seen before, but it really feels like he's laughing at Spawn's expense. Since he'll clearly have an important role to play in this story, given the cliffhanger where two angels come to take Spawn to heaven, hopefully Gaiman will take the opportunity to develop his character some and do a little more than sitting in the alley moping. I wonder if Capullo is sick of drawing the scene yet. We've only seen her twice now, and Angela already seems more worthy of an ongoing comic book than Spawn, but that's due to the competency of the writing and the depth of the character, more than the story concept itself. I don't know if this whole mini will be as good as this issue, but I'm afraid I'm in for a bittersweet experience. I just can't trust that when I'm finished with the bold and decisive Angela, I won't be right back to watching Spawn get rained on. Signed, Captain Logan. <laughs> 